All right, fellas, so I almost burnt the shop down, and uh, I want to show you how. UL ratings go a long way, so don't build your own stuff and then leave. This is the ozone generator I built. The reason I built it is because this one caught on fire, and I think I know why that happened. Um, here's the electrode that was in there. It broke for me dropping it, but a fire started inside of the ozone generator. And because I was using 95% oxygen, it was a pretty dramatic incident. Subsequent to that, the transformer fried itself, which is why it's sitting here all cut up right now. So maybe a wire got grounded out in there or something. I'm not exactly sure what happened. Got some serious scoring right there. So really weird. I don't know what happened. I think it, I think what happened was the Lynch and Graf voltage traveling through this wood. I may have had one of these wires touching the wood and the current went through the wood into this shell and started to cause Lynch and Graf voltages on this plastic. And that being in a oxygen rich environment caused the ignition of the PVC. Now the reason why I'm using this is because I am sterilizing water for my plasma table. It's currently doubling as a shelf at the moment, but essentially I drain this tank when I'm not using it to kind of keep all the dust and bugs out of the tank. That way I don't have to use the carcinogenic anti-corrosion green fluid that you see. They, that stuff causes cancer. They say that, they, that it doesn't, but the ingredients indicate that it does. I don't think you can see the bottom of it. Here, we cannot see the bottom intake spout. I want to show you how much the ozone will clean this water up. Because this thing caught on fire the first second I, I fired it up last time, I have a camera on it this time, just in case. The uh, oxygen-rich environment is quite tricky when you're dealing with really high voltages. If you get any arc over, that arc over will ignite any plastic. Damn, I wish I would have caught that on video. Had an oxygen fire and everything going. Damn it. Well, that sucks. This is a borosilica glass tube right here as the casing, and underneath that, we have another borosilica tube acting as the ozone electrode. Guys, I made a huge mistake. Something just dawned on me. This is not borosilica glass. This is quartz, guys. This big old thick tube right here is borosilica glass, some really good high-grade, like Pyrex-type glass. This is some very good lab grade glass. However, you, when it comes to quartz, this stuff can't hold a candle to quartz with, um, in regards to high tension. So I'm glad I caught that. I kind of sent you guys astray there. If anyone decided they wanted to build one of these, do not run out and buy some high dollar borosilica glass. You gotta have quartz, man. This is the transformer driver. So frequency plays a big role in ozone production. And this is the transformer. And the reason why we have the driver is because it powers the high frequency that's needed to make a good ozone generator. It's not good to just hook this up to 230 volts and then crank out a 60 hertz signal. In fact, it wouldn't even create the proper resonance needed to get a good glow. I have a neon sign transformer that puts out 50,000 volts and it's, it's just terrible. There's something about the high frequency that is very good for ozone production. It's an absolute must. So we're using a 5,000 watt transformer to run a 40 watt ozone generator. That's the typical disparity that we find around this place. It's definitely more pronounced. 
Now, the first time I fired this thing up the other day, I turned it up all the way like an idiot and it immediately burst into flame. So we're not gonna be doing that today. We're gonna let it run like this for a while and see how hot it gets. Okay, the ozone coming off of it now is strong enough that it kind of stings a little bit when you smell it. I know you're not supposed to smell this stuff, but a little whiff here and there ain't gonna kill you. So another moral to this story, UL ratings go a long way. Do not set your ozone generator on the same surface that high voltage wires come in contact with. Because this right here is a disaster waiting to happen. So here it is after a few hours and you can now see the drain port. Some of the cloudiness we still see is the colloidal particles of rust. The bubbler kind of stirred up the muck on the bottom of the tank there. See that big open spot right there? The bubbles were hitting that and stirring up all the dirt. Everywhere else is pretty much covered. But before, we could not see the bottom of the tank. So I'll get another pick of it maybe after the the particles settle that we stirred up the rust particles and it'll be as clear as tap water i'm just running this thing for a few hours <laughs> 